You're watching Bye Bye Bloomington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. Mike Giles, coastal advocate, Tracy Scrabble, environmental scientist, both for the North Carolina Coastal Federation, are our guests this morning. Again, a program note, you're hearing one side of the issue. We're going to look at the other side of the issue with the project manager for uh, Titan, uh, Bob Odom, will be our solo guest on June 20th. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the new uh, proposed EPA standards. Uh, but let's get back to CEPA for just a second. They weren't denied the permit. They were told they have to go through the process that CEPA requires. Is that, is that accurate? Correct. What CEPA does is hold all <clears throat> state action, i.e. permitting, until there's a comprehensive cumulative review by all the agencies and the public has a chance to be involved. Until that review is done, all permits and state action right. are but in they did, uh They were maintaining, no, we should be able to get our air permit because we don't come under. Correct. And, and the key thing is if they get the air <clears throat> permit, then the National Environmental Policy Act, the NEPA review that the Corps does, the federal government, is going to be biased because mm -hmm. they have to look at all practicable alternatives. If they already have a permit for the kiln at that location, that biases that review. All right, so let's look at the, uh, there's some new EPA, proposed EPA air quality standards that are, are, are getting ready to be adopted. Is, is that accurate? That is correct. Uh, we're not sure exactly when they'll be adopted, perhaps June. Um, now that's, the, the, is one of the questions, will Titan be able to comply with these new stricter regulations? Well, they, they will be required to comply. However, what they're proposing right now, I just brought a couple of things because I knew you'd ask this. What they're proposing now, if they were to get their air permit right now, uh, they would get permitted to, inc to allow seven and a half times the proposed limit for particular matter. That's what all the dust that comes out of the stack, which is estimated to be about 700 tons, tons per year. It's a huge amount. They would be allowed- And that's loaded uh, according to what you believe that's loaded with bad stuff. Toxic, that is mercury, all Right. That. Cement plants are required to self-report, and they self-report <clears throat> about 130 toxic air pollutants. So we know what comes out the stack. Uh, they would be allowed to uh, uh, release eight and a half times proposed limits for mercury. And of course, mercury is an extremely toxic. Well, let's, let's talk toxic. about mercury all pollution right. in, the, in the Cape Fear River. It's another big issue because the, the, the river's already contaminated. It's already uh, impaired on the federal 303 right. list. And Titan said they have no plans to discharge any mercury-laden wastewater into the Northeast Cape Fear River. Your comments? That, that's a key point. Titan has no plans. Well, let's see them through the SEPA review. And let's I see what they propose until they get the, in, before they get their permit. Where do you think the Titan issue stands right now? Is there a possibility it, it won't happen? Do you think they'd abandon? That's the, our goal. Uh, that's our goal. That's what the citizens that we represent, the citizens that we deal with, how they want it to go away. We want it to go away. Uh, how, how important is public opinion? I think public opinion is what drives citizens. And, you know, advocacy is, is not a bad thing. Citizens have to stand up for what they believe in for, and for their community. That has, and that's and, what they've done. And it, I believe, too, that they would have their permit right now if it weren't for the citizens in this county. In the last New Hanover County Commission election, many say that incumbent Bill Kopp was defeated because of his vote for the Titan incentives and his support of the project. Another New Hanover County Commissioner, Bill Castor, is up for re-election if he... Uh, uh, if he makes the cut in a primary, correct, uh, in a primary runoff, and he uh, voted for the initiative, supports the project. Uh, do you think this is a bit, will be a big issue in his campaign? Uh, from the citizens that we've talked to, and we don't get involved in politics, being a nonprofit organization, we we try to work with all of them. But from the citizens that we've talked to, it is very much on their mind in this election, and uh, the citizens are aware that Mr. Castor has been a strong. A proponent for Titan. Smith. If 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 Bill Castor is reelected, would would that be a barometer to you where the public is on on this one issue? Well, you know, elections are the way. You know, decisions and protection of your community happens at the local level. You talk about government. You know, it doesn't happen at the state and federal level. It happens at your local le level, and that's what citizens have available to them. If you don't like the way the way things are, you always have your elected officials to look to. So, uh, would it be a barometer? Uh, yes, but we speak to them every day. We already know how concerned businesses and citizens are in this community. So, All right, so if Titan comes here, your environmental uh, advocates, uh, 
this is your this is what you do what happens uh, we'll, we'll be involved from the process from we've been involved and we will continue to be involved if 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 Titan goes through the SEPA review Coastal Federation and other groups will be involved as stakeholders and looking at the issues then when it gets to the core we'll be sitting at the table but if if, if they build that plant are, are is are we doomed I mean what what, what what's going to I think it would be a major major blow to this community I don't think you would recognize Wilmington I just there'd be visible tangible fourth largest cement manufacturing plant in the country it's going to be an enormous. Oh, I misspoke. It's, I said third. It's, right, it would be the fourth. It would be an enormous facility that you see as you come into Wilmington, and there would be once you open up that door for industrial development in that section of the Northeast Cape Fear, you've opened the door for all the ancillary industries, and so it will be. We will become an industrial corridor. And the key point: this will be the largest cement plant in a coastal region in the mm -hmm. United States. Right. This is a unique region. This is not a place for a cement manufacturing plant on one of our most pristine ecological systems. Uh, the Cape Fear River is a biodiversity hotspot, one of only two in the eastern United States. So this States. will be a game changer for this area? I think it will be a game Absolutely. changer for the environment. It will be a game changer for the people that live here. It will be a game changer for the ec economy of our, of our region. We will have missed the opportunity to attract new green, develop new green businesses because uh, Dr. Galbraith, who's an economist at the university, looked at studies of where industrial development comes into communities, and what you find is that it has a long-term negative effect. It, it breeds more of what they call low-tech industries, and, and all the things that we value, the tourism, the, the green industries, go somewhere else. We're out of time. Who wants to be here? Tracy Scrabble. Environmental scientist, thank you for joining You're us. Welcome. Mike Giles, thank you. Thank you. coastal advocate, thank you for joining thank you. us. As I mentioned, uh, June 20th, uh, Bob Odom, the project manager for Titan, will be our solo guest, and we'll get the other side of the story then. In the coming weeks, we have a, um, some really interesting uh, shows coming up. A former addict will tell his story of addiction uh, in, a, in a future show, so stay with us for that. Michael Kraus, executive director of Wilming Wilmington Housing Authority. Uh, they've been in the headlines for a lot of issues. He'll be a solo guest. We'll also talk to the CEO of R3 Environmental. Uh, they are in contract talks with New Hanover County about uh, their revolutionary solid waste system. And we'll talk to a man who was on death row for 17 years until a recent DNA test confirmed his innocence. So we have some very uh, compelling shows coming up. Stay with us for that. Thank you for joining us. We'll, we'll see you for sure next week. If you'd like to see uh, some of our shows we have an inventory online at WILM-TV.com. For Byline Wilmington, I'm Don Ansel. You've been watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning as we explore the issues that concern you.